My name is Jessica Miklas, and this is Christopher Miklas, and together we own a company called Passionate Paws and Claws. We're located in Crofton, Maryland, and we groom both dogs and cats. We're really excited to show you guys some of our skills and talk to you about some of our techniques, and um, just to give you some motivation on how much we enjoy our career as cat groomers and you know, motivate you guys to do the same. Yeah, to add cat grooming to your repertoire of skills would be great for your salons to add more revenue and to service uh, your community for the people who need cat grooming. And there is cats of all shapes and sizes. Um, you know, there are different temperaments that we deal with on a daily basis. So we may deal with cats that are used to grooming, the owners are at home brushing them, petting them. Um, but there's definitely the starkly opposite cat that does not appreciate touch at all. The owner has difficulty catching them. Uh, they usually don't spend their day out with the pet owner. They're maybe under a bed or under furniture. Maybe they're a barn cat. So we do handle lots of different personalities and there are different techniques that we implement when we're grooming the different person. Personalities. So we're going to start with Simba and first we'll show you how we get him out of the carrier because that is certainly part of the service. We do a lot of our cat grooming services right in front of the client. So this may mean that um, it's not necessarily pretty uh, when the client is watching you provide the service. I make sure that I'm very transparent about you know what they may see what they may experience with their cat and that way they don't reach in and they don't do anything unsafe um, and make sure to have like a conversation with the client and make sure they're uh, ready to be safe and let us do our jobs at the, as the professional. Yeah, but we, we want them to be included if they if they want to be included. We, sh we should be able to provide every service in, in front of, of the owner if they'd like. Um, but yeah, Simba's telling us that he does not want to come out. Uh, so we can either un undo his kennel for him and then we lift it off, and now we have Simba. So with a cat that you've met before and you can trust, I uh, usually will keep my hold around the shoulders and behind the armpits and the elbows. Um, if you aren't familiar with the cat or you're not sure if it's gonna try or bite or scratch you, I usually will keep my hand on the neck or the back of the cat and keep my hands out of the bite zone which would be this whole area. And as Jess and I groom cats, we, we kind of figure out who's gonna be holding this cat and who's gonna be doing this cat. Uh, so uh, today, uh, I'm gonna hold Simba and Jess is gonna groom uh, Simba. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna help uh, Simba feel comfortable and confident with us. Um, and, and I'm gonna figure out what kind of restraint to use if we're going to be scruffing him or stretching him. But uh, he, he's otherwise uh, a great cat right now. Um, he's just gonna get used to us. So as uh, as we get the um, as we get the cat uh, on the table uh, and I'm feeling them over out of the, out of the their carriers, we start feeling them and we feel them for any problem areas so that we can talk to the owner about them. Uh, if you are somebody who accepts cats, you want to check in your cat properly because you want to make sure there's not any um, any issues with your cat uh, that you're going to be grooming. Uh, maybe it has uh, the owner tried to groom and might have used tools that were dangerous. Uh, so you want to make sure there's no like wounds or any other medical issues and you would ask all this and generally there wouldn't be any issue. Um, you would take a look at the belly area and, uh, and feel and he has some matting in his chest and down his belly and um, around through his haunches. So we're, we're going to start by disarming the cat by uh, trimming his nails. Uh, we do this two ways. We'll scruff the cat and we'll hold them to their side if uh, they're not amenable to this hold and we'll take the cat from up here we want him kind of slouchy like up under his arms we want him like slouching and we'll grab just like this and we'll extend the rear out and so now this cat is comfortable he feels restrained and held and he's going to be amenable to us trimming his nails this gives the person trimming the nails a lot of control over the foot of the nail how much they're trimming and how safe they are so you see that he tries to struggle, but I don't have to scruff him. Um, if he starts showing uh, a lot of struggling, I will scruff him for the safety of him and the person providing the service. Um, so now we move on to the next, the, the next step. So we're gonna brush this cat out last, but we're gonna do all his shaving first. We do an extreme hygienic trim on this cat. So we're gonna shave this cat from his armpits 
down his belly to his urinary areas and also do his paw pads. We, we figure every cat is on a timer. So, you know, we only have so much time for this cat before he starts becoming um, a, not a willing participant in our, in our service. So we're gonna go ahead and put him to his side, nice and lightly. And we're gonna use scruff work. So scruff works where you're using, the, and he's purring right now. And we're gonna use the scruff real lightly and we're gonna massage it in. And we're gonna keep the cat massaged down and so that he stays down. I'm gonna use my wall carmados on a nine setting, which is the longest setting. And I like to start in the armpits. I'm clipping, I like to focus on areas that are held taut by the cat's hold. And when I move to an area that is really bunched up or not held taut, then I will hold it taut with my fingers. Just so like stretch the skin. Stretch the skin, make sure where you're clipping is really flat. And then you also want to know the anatomy of your cat. Find its nipples, find its umbilical area, and you'll have a better idea of how to avoid those areas. You don't want to clip directly over the nipple or you will cut the cat. Um, and so, and, yes. And the cat feels uh, comfortable, restrained. Um, I let the person with the sharp clippers focus on not cutting the cat and to remove any matting or tangles and areas like we're doing right here. Um, this area is a little matted. We also notice that as we clip out the matted areas, the cat feels more flexible and more comfortable. Sometimes they get a little bit more feisty after you remove the areas that had been hurting them in the past. But I like to get them off first thing, so that way none of my hold is potentially putting any tension on those areas. Get them comfortable as soon as you can. And we always work in tandem uh, grooming cats. So we'll, we'll, we always work with a team member um, and it helps us keep um, a great success rate with grooming cats. So, you know, it, it, maybe your cat uh, is groomed every day at your house and um, and you, 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 you take it on leash walks and all, whatever. Uh, you know, maybe that cat can be groomed by one person. But in our salon, we have a generally great success rate because when someone calls us asking us about grooming their cat, I know that I have somebody who can help me hold calm and assist the cat and help me get the job done as fast as we can. Because again, they're on a timer. So the faster we get this done for this cat, uh, the better they're gonna feel about the, the, the process. Uh, we wanna get his underside real clean for the owner and we want to get it nice and smooth. So um, we could stretch him, but we found that uh, the best way is to get him to stand up on his back legs, if he'll do it, and that we hold him up and we stretch each leg. And so he's putting most of his weight on his haunches himself, which cats are totally capable of doing. Um, and I'm holding by his scruff and we're stretching each leg out so that we can get the armpits and the inner of the, the leg. Uh, we like this a lot on cats that it's difficult because we're holding the legs and he's generally calm. We're not hurting him in any way. Uh, we are not stressing this cat out. Uh, we are accomplishing the job uh, quick and, and thoroughly enough so that we can let this cat go and go back home and be happier. Um, so now that we did that, we're gonna do the feet, the paw pads. I do the paw pads on the shortest setting. And I just skim over uncovering the little toe beans. I don't carve in between the foot like I'm grooming a dog or a poodle. Just helps to give them traction. Stop tracking out litter. And then since we're gonna just finish it up with the clippers, I'm gonna, we're gonna do the rear. We, so uh, the tail and the butt are like your, usually your last thing you wanna do um, if you're clipping or you're brushing. If this cat's trigger was his rear and he would turn, you know, otherwise not, uh, you know, not very appreciative of the service, we would just even do that last after the brushing. But today we're gonna clip his rear so we can be done with the clipping and start our brushing out. So I lift the cat, I present the rear and I just, I keep the, the front end, I kind of just keep my hand pushing down and I, you can scruff here and I just present the rear. Um, most cats, if you do this really quick, uh, they're, they're amenable to it. He is purring right now. He's not having a bad time. You want to explain what you're doing? So I would consider Simba a medium to long haired cat. 
he has a lot of congested, compacted undercoat that's just stuck in his top coat and it's smothering his skin surface. So he needs all this stripped out. Uh, not only will his coat lay down and look nicer, but he will feel nicer. His skin can breathe and uh, he will be less itchy. When he's grooming himself, he will be swallowing less hair, which is huge for these cats. Um, you know, digestive issues alone. But uh, I think brushing out your cat regularly is imperative to their health. And if you can't do it as a pet owner, then have a professional do it. How often does this cat come? This cat comes on a quarterly basis. So once every three months, he comes in for something, whether that's just nails or a butt shave, or he gets a full body brush out. Is that because the owner's doing some at home? Or? Yeah, so she brushes at home with a slicker brush and a fine tooth comb and she has trouble reaching his underside. So we do his hygienic clip quarterly for her and that really helps to maintain the matting. Because then he's not in pain from the matting underneath and then she can focus on the stuff on the top. Yeah. And there isn't matting. All the stuff that he lets her do. So we start off by breaking the coat up with, with uh, different kind of brushes. And we want to we want to break up this this density here that this cat has. It's pretty dense, so we want to we want to get some of the stuff that's coming off all the way out. But we'll do that by breaking it up first before we comb it out, and then we can identify other problem areas like the matting or any other tangles we might have missed. Because here's like one right here. I do like to use slicker brushes first because, like he was saying, it breaks it up. And then if I have stuff that's going to come out of the coat fairly easily, I can pull that out without using a comb. Um, whereas I'm going to move to those steps and I'm going to get all the detail stuff that's stuck in this coat. But I do find that slicker brushing breaks it up and then the combing is less uncomfortable. I really don't think combing is too uncomfortable, but if you if you come across a mat or a tangle with a comb, I usually pull the comb out and go back to the slicker brush and brush it out for him instead. Um, you know, just for example, if I take my comb through the coat that I just slicker brushed, it just glides through. I, I'm still pulling out dead coat, so this uh, part of the process is important. Um, but when you come across stuff like there, we didn't. This slicker. needs to be slicker brushed, that's or I'm going to cause pain. Yeah. So I, I stop. I identify that's where it is, and I switch to my slicker brush again, and I will go ahead and break up that area just for a second or two. And you and notice how the cat, the cat's very. Uh, you know, he's very compliant. Goes uh, right there. <laughs> and, he, and he doesn't mind it. I'm keeping a hand on him to help calm him. I mean, he's licking me right now. Um, and uh, I just want him to know that I'm here for him and uh, that uh, he he has a, he's having a good time. I would hope that most of the animals that we see in our salons, you know, they're, they're, they're loved pets. And so somebody in this cat's lifetime would have held this cat and said, I love you. And I feel great about, uh, you. And, uh, I hope I just try to, uh, communicate that with my hands that I really like you too. And, uh, you know, I'm not here to restrain you and hold you and, and oppress you if, if you know i just need you to just stay here because i really like you <laughs> i don't know if that makes sense but that's what i do I, as a holder and uh, we teach all, a lot of the holders in our salon are bathing uh, assistants or grooming assistants so we we will of course do the shaving and the clipping uh, but we'll start off our grooming assistants teaching them holding techniques and then we'll teach them nail trimming and then hygienic trimming to then up to lion shaving um, but it takes a while. Uh, you have, they have to come in contact with many cats with many different temperaments and in many different situations and many different code types. Uh, so it, it just takes a while to get them hands on with all the cats and then to get past some of the anxiety because uh, cats have a good, a good, good ways of telling you they don't like it. <laughs> and uh, we, we, you know, we try to make sure we work within uh, the realm of being compassionate and, and safe but also providing them the care that they need. A, a cat is a GMO. It's a genetically modified organism and they need people uh, to groom them. And so they need us to take care of their coats. And that's why we're here. So you know, there's a big uh, uh, thing out there that cat, cats groom themselves so they don't need people. And that's just not, that's not all the way true. Especially a cat that doesn't live outdoors um, and the weather is its groomer. <laughs> So as you're brushing and combing out your cat, you will notice that your comb will slide right through areas that still hold dead coat. 
So it's important to have either your fingers, um, a gloved hand, or a pumice stone available. I really like pumice stones. They're really cheap. You can just break off the corner of one and you can use it on your cat very easily. Um, you know, just a, for instance area would be right here. This is just dead coat. And you can tell because it's dull compared to the color of the actual cat. It's also a little scraggly looking and it is um, grown out past the point of growth for the cat. So I usually grab the pumice stone and I just grab the hair by the edge and I just gently pull it out. Right. It's also known as hand stripping in dogs, um, but you can easily strip these areas on a cat. It doesn't cause discomfort if you're using the right pressure when you actually go to the tip of the hair. So you do wanna grab, slide, and then hold, and then pull. Um, and you do that all in fast motion. Um, but if I were to slow down to show you, I would slide down the hair, grab at the end, and pull. So I break it up with that slicker brush and I go back through with the comb. If I have a, something like this that's so stuck, I really do like this green and gold ActiVet brush. And I can just tap and pull, tap and pull, and it pulls out. I mean, it pulls out mats and tangles that other slicker brushes pass right by. So I am a fan. You do have to have a very light touch with this brush. Um, but it does pull out what you're struggling with in that area. And then you can comb right through it. A cool trick that I have learned when the cat is like that, he's a super nice cat. No really need to scruff him for restraining purposes. But if I need to give Chris a couple extra seconds of this cat just relaxing in a specific hold, I will just gently scruff the cat and I will move his head side to side like that. And, and it doesn't hurt, it does look a little odd, um, but I find that they relax for a couple more seconds just to let you get through that one thing that they weren't appreciating. And then let go, pet it out, and you can re-scruff them and releases endorphins and it causes them to calm. And so it, it really is a relaxing technique opposed to like a... But not all cats are scruffable. This is true. There, yeah. are, there are cats um, immediately when they think that you're going to scruff, they hunch up their shoulders and they take away all the extra skin. Sometimes it can be uh, cats that are overweight, but I have seen cats that you know should be completely scruffable uh, and they just don't appreciate that hold. And so they just scrunch their shoulders and you literally cannot hold that cat in a scruff. So we'll hold those cats by our shoulders and if they're biters, we'll use gloves and shoulders. Yep, yep. So the shoulders are usually your handle. And if you have a hold of the shoulders, you have pretty good control of your cat. You do need to be concerned about the cat being a biter. So I may hold the cat this way. Um, I know this cat and I like to give him a little kind of nook for him to stick his head when he's not appreciating parts of it. But uh, it really depends on the individual that you're working with. So we're gonna do the neck area. I like to use the jaw as my handle for the neck. I just gently hold the head up and then I can come down the whole mane. And I keep the legs. I just kind of, he's not doing it, but some cat's bad at it. And I just hold the legs and I'm really like, my hands are just here. They're not really, I'm not squeezing him or anything like that. I'm just keeping him on the table. <laughs> the top of the head is always super compacted with dead undercoat. So if you can find a fine tooth comb or a carding comb that goes through the top of the head, it helps them in a big way. It's also helpful to use a, a curry comb, a rubber product on the top of the head, and that will pull out a lot of the dead undercoat in the top of the head and the cheeks. And it just cards it out. It just pulls it out of the pore because of the rubber. Some of the last, uh, the last bits of the brush out that we do, we're gonna make sure that we went over this whole cat um, with brushes and combs. We usually save the rear end for last, including the tail. Uh, they, they, I, I haven't met a cat that really loves the tail done. Uh, we use a slicker brush to help break it up. Rubber curry combs to help us pull off some of this dead stuff. Um, we use a uh, piece of pumice stone to help us get some of the dead fine coat that's uh, near the end out and strip that out and then uh, we go through and we comb we comb finish uh, the one of our favorite combs to use is the utsumi half moon comb uh, the texture of the metal is uh, really nice for removing the last bits or at least finishing it and uh, it doesn't it's not as um, the carding comb will be a really dense pattern comb so it really tug 
um, and that will help you get some dead coat out. But th this will help you finish the comb and or finish the cat's uh, coat out real nice um, and help you identify anything you might have missed. So here's something we missed right, right there. So we're going to be able to see what that is. It looks like a mat. Um, it's a mat that I'm not going to... I'm not going to do anything with shave out. So we just want to be real nice to them. Don't, don't demat cats if you don't, you know, we don't even know off with that. So we shave it out. Um, once in a while, you'll, you'll figure out that some, some of the mats or the clumping uh, does. It's on the end of the hair and it will come right out. But um, most of the time you just shave it right out. It's the nicest thing to do for the cat. So I'm identifying anything here. I'm going to go back through. And as you see, we're, we're getting a lot out with this Utsumi comb. So nice and light. Most cats hate the hawk area. Oh, he says, ouch. Yes. So, you know, without a holder, I don't know how to do some of these sensitive areas. Like, even the nicest cat, they, they don't have, I don't know, know they don't have hands. Do yeah, they, they don't have hands. So they say no, and they'll say no with their claws in their mouth. Um, I'm, of course, not hurting this cat. I'm not trying to. Um, some of the things may be uncomfortable, but we are not uh, in the business to hurt animals or to provide a service at the expense of those animals. Um, you know, it, we want him to have a good time. We want him to like me. This cat's been coming to me for a while, and, it, and I think by now, if he saw me, he wouldn't be as nice as he is to me if I was hurting him every time. I like the groomer scoop wipes. These are shampoo wipes made for cats and dogs. You can use them in the sensitive areas of the cat. Uh, you can use them on the whole entire body, but my biggest uses for them would be the facial discharge around the eyes. You can also use them on the ear flap and on the butt. So he is excited about this part, as you can the see. The mom bought the wipes and uses them. Yeah, so, so he's like, thank you. Yeah, he knows, Please he knows wipe what's my about eyeballs. to happen. So I, I usually will close the cat's eye and I will do a little light pressure and what that will do is add the moisture from the wipe onto the cat's coat. <laughs> <laughs> he really he, he likes, likes it. He likes this part. Yeah. Um, and I'm really glad that he does because his what mom can wipe all the time. What kind of pressure are you applying right now? Um, I would say the pressure that I use to apply eyeshadow, if that's a good way to put it. Um, I just use a mild pressure that adds the solution to the cat's coat and that way it softens up the debris and then it slides down the hair shaft. So I think the contact time is a little bit more important than the pressure. So maybe I might rub this area and wait a second and then comb it out with a fine tooth comb. Uh, we use these facial combs. They're really fine tooth metal facial combs, but you can also wait a moment because then it has a, some time to do its job <laughs> and then you can just slide the debris down the hair. Yeah, absolutely. So I think contact time is pretty important. And you're just holding around the jaw muscles. Yeah, the... right here on the jaw. That way I'm not putting any pressure. On his throat on or his, his throat. nose. Sometimes cats have dental pain. And in the case that they do, I will hold them on the top and bottom of their head instead of their jaw because they will feel pain in their molars. And as a holder here, I'm either holding and keeping his claws down if he's not. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of holding his his chest down and I'm pushing down on the cat. Sometimes I'll even hover over to make sure the cat really feels like I have a, a, a grip on them. Um, and, uh, but I, again, I'm not really, I'm not like tightly holding this cat. I'm just keeping him up here, letting him know that I love him and that I'm petting him and that I'm here for him. And uh, I don't know what this lady's doing to him. <laughs> <laughs>